Hello and welcome to Module 5, Video 2. In this video, we'll discuss something called a discrete probability distribution. So to understand what this thing is, let's just jump right on in. Some terminology. First, a random variable is discrete if its possible values can be listed. Some examples include the value that you roll on a die, or the list of all whole numbers, or whatever you get when you flip a coin, whether it's heads or tails, that sort of thing. In contrast, a random variable is continuous if it could be any value in an interval. So for example, this could be time or height. Now, we've seen these words before, discrete and continuous, back in Module 1 when we classified different types of data. As we saw when we made graphs, we had to treat discrete values a little bit differently from continuous values, and that's going to be the same in terms of probability. Module 5 is going to talk primarily about discrete probabilities, and then in Module 6, we'll discuss some types of continuous probabilities. When I have a discrete random variable, I can create something called a discrete probability distribution. So a discrete probability distribution for a discrete random variable specifies the probability for each possible value of the random variable. So let's do an example of creating a discrete probability distribution. Suppose that M&Ms are mixed so that 13% are brown, 13% are red, 20% are orange, 14% are yellow, 16% are green, and all the rest are blue. Let's state the probability distribution. When we create a probability distribution, we're basically creating a table with two columns. In column X, we will list all of the different events that can occur. In the second column, P of X, we will list the probability of each event occurring. In this example, the events are the different colors of the M&Ms. So you can list the colors in any order, I'm just going to list them in the order that they came. So the first color is brown, followed by red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Then we can use the percentages that we were given to help us find the probabilities. Since 13% of the M&Ms are brown, that means that the probability of finding a brown M&M is 0.13. Since 13% of the M&Ms are red, the probability that an M&M is red is also 0.13. And we can continue down the list. Since 20% of the M&Ms are orange, the probability of orange is 0.20. And since 14% are yellow, the probability of yellow is 0.14. And since 16% are green, the probability of a green M&M is 0.16. When we get to the end of our list, however, we're stuck with blue, because we weren't told the percentage of M&Ms that were blue. However, we can find it. Since these are the only colors of M&Ms, we know that these percentages have to add up to be 100%. So the first thing I'm going to do is add up all of the percentages we know. So I'll add up 0.13 plus 0.13 plus 0.20 plus 0.14 plus 0.16, and that will give me a 0.76, or 76%. To find the ratio of M&Ms that are blue, all I have to do then is to subtract that 0.76 from 1. This is like subtracting 76% from 100% and I end up with a 0.24, or 24%. So the probability that an M&M is blue is 0.24, and that's how you can create a probability distribution. Here's a note. In a probability distribution, all of the probabilities have to add up to be one. This is just like when we made relative frequency distributions earlier. All of the relative frequencies had to add up to be one. When you have a pie graph, all of the percentages have to add up to be 100%. It's the same idea, just in a new context. So let's do an example of identifying whether a table is a probability distribution or not. In this example, we need to determine whether the table below represents a discrete probability distribution. Take a moment and see if you can answer this question. Does this table represent a discrete probability distribution? The answer to that question is no, and there are a couple of different ways that we can tell. First, notice that the probability of getting a 6 in this distribution is a negative 0.3. This literally has no meaning. There's no way to have a negative probability. So right off the bat with this first probability, we can tell that this table has something fishy about it. Another way that you could tell that this is not a probability distribution 
is by adding up all of the probabilities. When I add up these four values, I end up with a 0.9, which would be like a 90%. Since they don't add up to one, this cannot be a probability distribution. Let's do another example similar to the M&M example. In example B, we've been asked to complete the probability distribution below. Notice that this table does include some negative numbers, but that's okay. An event could be a negative, but a probability cannot. So for example, maybe the event here means the amount of money that you win. So if your event was negative two, that would mean you would lose $2. If the event was a 1, that might mean you win $1, and if the event is a 0, that would mean you neither win nor lose anything. Also notice that our probabilities can take on multiple forms. We have two decimal values, and we have a fraction, and any format is okay whether it's fraction or decimal. To complete this probability distribution, we need to figure out what goes in that last box. Remember the note that all of the probabilities have to add up to 1. If I add the probabilities we have so far, I get a total of 0.85. When I subtract this amount from 1, I get 0.15. So that must mean that the probability of getting a 1 is 0.15. The complement of an event x is the event that x does not occur. Notationally, we'll write this with what looks like an exponent, but it is not an exponent. It looks like x to the c. But really, this notation just means the complement of x, or x complement. So if you think about complements for a moment, suppose an event has a 30% chance of happening. That means it has a 70% chance that it won't happen. You can find the probability of a complement by just subtracting the probability of the event from 1. In other words, the probability of the complement of x is the same as 1 minus the probability of x. Let's do an example. Suppose you have an incomplete deck of 45 playing cards. You know that there are all 13 diamonds, but that you only have 10 cards with hearts on them. Let's find each of the following probabilities. So for part A, to determine the probability that I will draw a card that has a heart on it, I'm going to take the number of hearts, or 10, and divide that by the number of cards in this incomplete deck, or divide it by 45. Since we weren't told how to express our answer, we could give it as either a fraction in simplest form, or as a decimal. I chose to go with a decimal on this one, so when I divided 10 by 45, I wound up with a repeating decimal of 0.2. Notice that I'm using the line on top of the 2 to indicate that the 2 is going to repeat. For part B, we've been asked to find the probability of drawing the complement of a heart. In other words, drawing a card that is not a heart. One way to do this is to subtract our answer to A from 1. So I can do 1 minus 0.2 repeating, and that will give me 0.7 repeating. Another way that I could have determined this probability would be 1 minus 10 over 45, and that would give me a 35 over 45, which would end up being the same thing, 0.7 repeating. For part C, we need to determine the probability of a red card. Since there are 10 hearts and 13 diamonds, we can add these values together and get 23. This means there are 23 red cards in this deck. So I'll put 23 in the numerator and 45 in the denominator since there are 45 cards. When I divide this out, I end up with 0.51 with the one repeating. To find the probability of drawing a black card, now I need to figure out how many black cards are in the deck. So one way to do that is to take the total number of cards and subtract the number of red cards. So 45 minus 23 will give me 22. So the probability of a black card is 22 out of 45, which when I turn into a decimal will give me 0.4 with a repeating eight. Another way that I could have figured out the answer to part D is by subtracting my answer to part C from 1. In other words, if I did 1 minus 0.5 repeating 1s, I would end up with 0.4 repeating 8s. Or, 1 minus 23 40 fifths would give me 22 40 fifths. This concludes our video on discrete probability distributions. In our next video, 
we'll be discussing some compound events and two-way tables. In other words, ways that we can combine two or more events together. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.